All right, welcome everybody. So in this video, we are going to see what happens when we're trying to find a least square solution and our model matrix A has a bunch of linearly independent columns. So in other words, the solution to that least squares problem is unique. Then we also are gonna be able to take this matrix A and find its QR factorization because all of its columns are linearly independent. Where recall that this um, matrix Q, the columns of Q form an orthonormal basis for the column space of A. And as a result of all of the columns of Q being orthonormal, when I take the product of Q transpose with Q, we'll get the identity matrix. So one of the matrix Q has a bunch of orthonormal columns and the other matrix R, which we find by taking Q transpose times A, that's an upper triangular matrix. And moreover, all of the entries on the main diagonal are gonna be positive. So let's see why this QR factorization is gonna be particularly nice for solving the least square problem. So um, the least square solution for uh, X, which we denote X hat. Um, so we're gonna assume here we're in the case where A has a bunch of linearly independent um, columns, in which case A transpose A is invertible. So here's the solution that we've derived. X is gonna equal A transpose A inverse times A transpose times B. And so now let's do some substitutions. Let's do a QR factorization for A. So every time I see an A, I'm gonna replace it with QR. So I'm gonna take QR transpose times QR for this A over here. I'm gonna multiply this product and then take the inverse. And then we're gonna multiply that by A, which we can replace with QR transpose times B. And now we're gonna use some properties of transposes, namely that if I wanna take the transpose of a product of two matrices A and B, that's the same thing as taking the product of their transposes in the opposite order. So that's B transpose times A transpose. So uh, for example, I can apply that to this first QR transpose and it's gonna be R transpose times Q transpose. And now I've got a Q transpose times a Q from this other term over here times R. And I'm gonna take the inverse of this matrix. And then we can also replace this QR transpose. It's gonna equal the same thing as R transpose times Q transpose. And then we multiply uh, on the right by this vector B. And because Q consists uh, is a matrix where all of its columns form an orth orthonormal basis for the column space of A, then we know Q transpose times Q gives us the identity matrix. So um, that is going to be the identity. And then if I take the identity times R, I just get R over here. So now this simplifies to R transpose times R inverse, all times R transpose times Q transpose times B. And next we can use a fact about uh, taking the inverse of a product where this um, property that I wrote in green makes sense only if A and B are two invertible square matrices. Um, and that is going to be the case for R, if you recall, this is a upper triangular matrix and all of the entries on the main diagonal are positive. So in other words, all of the eigenvalues are non-zero. So I do know that R is invertible and therefore the transpose of R is also invertible. So this product that I'm gonna take the inverse of, right? I can change the order around. So this is equivalent to R inverse times R transpose inverse. And then we still have an R transpose, a Q transpose and a B. And now I've got R transpose inverse times R transpose. So this is the identity. So that term goes away. And what we've got is R inverse times Q transpose times B. So this uh, condition that we had up top, which was a product of one, two, three, four different things, one of them involved in inverse, um, it simplifies quite a bit down to this product down here where R is gonna be a particularly nice matrix because it's gonna be an upper triangular matrix. And the fact that this is upper triangular means that the matrix product is much, much easier and faster to calculate 
Um, so when you're doing linear regression using technology, it is actually using this QR factorization in order to speed up these calculations. And so let's apply this method to the previous example that we looked at with the GDP um, model to see how a QR factorization um, might look like in that solution. Okay, so the model, again, that we were looking at, and we've already solved this, but I want to solve it now using a QR decomposition, was we had uh, the GDP per capita of three different countries, so that was the wealth, and we're trying to come up with a model to predict the wealth as a function of the literacy rate, which is the first column, and life expectancy, which is the second column. So this matrix A has two linearly independent columns. So um, we can go ahead and try and find uh, orthogonal basis for the column space using the Gram-Schmidt process. So re recall, I would just take the first vector, that's gonna be my V1, and then I go through and find the projection of the second column vector onto V1, and I wanna pick off the orthogonal complement to that. So um, you can check the Google Colab notebook linked in the description of this video to verify these calculations. Um, but what I would get would be A2, uh, which is over here. Here's the weight that I would get for the orthogonal projection onto V1. So taking the difference gives me the complement of the orthogonal projection. So this gives me a vector V2, which is orthogonal to V1. So now I've got two vectors which form an orthogonal basis for the column space. But if I want to do a QR decomposition, I need to first normalize those vectors. So I'm going to take this vector 78, or excuse me, this vector 98, 81, 92, and normalize it. And that's what we have over here. And then I take this second basis vector, which is orthogonal to the first, and I normalize it so that it has length 1. And that gives me my matrix Q. And from this, we can find matrix R, which recall we're going to get by taking Q transpose. So I'm going to take the transpose of this matrix Q, and then we're going to multiply uh, A. And so taking that product, you can verify, gives me this matrix R, which is upper triangular. The first column is 156.90 and the second column is 130.1, 10.35. And this is an invertible matrix. So now I've got my QR decomposition, and then we can go ahead and figure out what the least square solution is x hat by taking the product of the inverse of R, which I've written down here is this first matrix, times the transpose of Q, and that's over here, times B, which is our observed GDP per capita. And calculating this product, we get the corresponding um, coefficients that are going to give us the best linear model. And this is consistent with the solution that we found not using the QR decomposition. So the QR decomposition makes this product a lot easier to calculate. Um, however, the QR factorization requires some work itself. So um, given a matrix A, if you were told what Q and R are, which is what you have to do on some of the homework problems, then you can go ahead and use this quick shortcut. Um, if you don't know what the QR factorization is, then it might be just as easy to solve it using the normal equations, which we did in a previous video as well. In the end, we get two consistent solutions.